Hello and welcome to St. G's Online today. It's great to have you with us. I'm Rich, I lead the church here at St. George's. We've got lots happening today. We're going to worship together, we're going to hear from the Bible, we're going to pray together. So we're, it's great to have you. If you're new or visiting, then why don't you say hello to us? Hello at gateshead.church. And next weekend, we're reopening our building. And you can join us, 9.30, 11.15, 5 o'clock. We'd love to see you. Don't forget to book online. And if you can't come, don't worry, we're still going to be online as well next weekend. But today we're gathered in our homes across Gateshead, Newcastle and further afield. And you're so welcome. Let's pray as we worship together today. And so Holy Spirit, we welcome you now into our homes, into our lives. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would come remind us again of the victory of Jesus and the love of the Father. And we pray today as we lift up the name of Jesus in this place, that your kingdom would come. In Jesus' name, amen.
going to start by praying for our world. Father God, we thank you that you are a God that is in control and everlasting and sovereign. Lord, we pray for the world at the moment that just seems in so much turmoil. We continue to pray and just go on our knees before you and pray for wisdom and medical breakthrough and um, ability to conquer this coronavirus. Lord, we pray for those people who are researching a vaccine, who are researching cures, Lord, that you would just give them um, the resources they need and the energy and the wisdom to break through. But Lord, we also pray for those who are most affected by this. Yes, the vulnerable, the ill, but also those in poorer countries, in countries that don't have the infrastructure, don't have the financial um, power that we have here. Lord, we pray particularly for people in India and some of the African countries and in South America who are really being hit by this. Lord, we just pray that you, you will be sovereign in this situation and continue to fa help find breakthrough. In your name, amen. It's been a big week in the UK, hasn't it? Um, schools are going back and Gateshead, most schools, are, some are back, most are going back next week. So let's pray for our community, for Gateshead, in particular for the people working in the education sector and also in the health sector as they start to plan for what might come as we move into this new period of time. Father God, we thank you so much for living in a country that does have such a great education system. Lord, we thank you for everyone who works in that sector, for all of the people who've been planning, um, and all of the teachers, of course, who've been planning and caring for our children during lockdown, but are now preparing to go back. Lord, we pray for protection. We do pray in the schools that there won't be transmission of virus, but we also pray um, for energy and um, calm for the teachers who are going in who might be worried about what's happening. Lord, for our children who are going to school next week or maybe already back at school, we pray that you'd give them that same sense of calm and the same knowledge that you're in control. We pray that it would be a positive time for them, that they'd love seeing their friends again and they'd be in a great environment where they can learn and be part of a community again. 
Lord, we continue to thank you for people who work in the healthcare sector, for people who've been on the front line against COVID and in the back, in the side wings, in the background, but all um, working hard during this period. Lord, we pray for them as they plan for winter, plan for what might come normally, but also what might come with Corona. And we just pray for wisdom and for energy and resources for them as well. We pray all this in your name. Amen. Now we're going to just take a wee bit of time to pray for ourselves. Um, it is a time of change and I just want to allow a little bit of space so you can pray for whatever is on your heart. Father God, we thank you that you know us. You know us each individually and you know where we are and you know our worries and our anxieties and our concerns. But we thank you, God, that you are with us in them. And we just uh, bring those before you now. We we'll spend a bit of time praying to you about that. Lord, we pray that we know your presence on a daily basis as we go into our everyday lives, be it at home or work and at education. We know that you are with us and you go ahead of us. Lord, we pray that you, we would know the power of your Holy Spirit in everything that we do from day to day and that you would be guiding us and leading us and giving us your peace and calm. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now let's finish by uh, saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, welcome back. I'm going to share now with you news from the church. Uh, the first thing I want to share about is Grace McCarthy. Grace McCarthy has left the staff team. She's no longer employed by us as our worship pastor. We want to say a huge thank you to her and to Sam for all that they've done over the last three years, and particularly the way that Grace has led us in worship. We're so thankful to her and to God for her. Uh, she goes around blessing. She's still going to be around the church as well, so you're going to see her still involved from time to time, but she's no longer on the staff team, and we're going to be recruiting a new worship lead over the coming weeks, so watch this space for more information about that. Uh, this week, we did have two people join our staff team, so I want you to welcome Lee and Zoe. Why don't you come join me, Lee and Zoe? And I know you're clapping at home, cheering and whistling and all those sort of things. Uh, so we have Lee with us. Uh, Lee, what are you going to be doing? States, looking yes. after the inside and the outsides of the building. That's right, he's going to be our estates manager looking after the inside and the outside of the building. We moved the piano together this week with Ailey's help. Um, I'm not going to say he was mostly the muscle in that situation. Uh, and Zoe, you're not going to be doing estates, you're going to be doing... going to be the children's lead. The children's lead. So we're welcoming these guys to the team. You're going to see them around over the coming weeks. And we're so excited for what God is going to do with them. Let's give them a big round of applause. Well, next weekend, we're so excited to be able to open the building again. We're going to have four spaces and three gatherings. The gathering times are 9.30, 11.15 and 5 p.m. I'm going to invite Ailey up now to tell us how we're going to do that in a COVID-secure way. So why don't we welcome Ailey to the stage? Hi Ailey. So, coming to church next week yes. is going to be a little bit different to what we used to. Tell us different. about the procedures. It is going to be different, but hopefully we've been doing a lot of work to make sure that we are safe, but it also feels like St George's. So hopefully you'll have a great time anyway. A couple of things you do need to know. You do need to pre-register. So as of tomorrow, Monday, you'll be able to register for the 13th and also for the rest of September. Register for the gathering that you want to come to. So there's two in the morning and one in the evening. Register for that. We do ask if you, that you turn up to the gathering that you registered for and also to turn up on time because we will be giving away those places if people don't turn up and they need a seat. And uh, you shouldn't come if you have COVID-19, yes. that's a very key thing or any symptoms, yeah. uh, but also if you do come you're going to have to wear a face mask, so just say a little bit about yeah. that. Yeah, so it is, um, it is law now to wear face masks in places of worship, so we will require that when you're in the building that we, you wear a face mask, either a disposable one or one of your reusable ones. If you don't have one or if you forget one, don't worry, we will have a sash here so you can borrow one. 
And we're going to have St. G's Kids uh, Youth happening as well across the day. So that's going to be really good. Again, register for those beforehand. It's going to be a great time. And I know there's lots of conversation happening amongst people, uh, lots of thoughts about what will church be like. But my expectation is that God wants to meet with us by his spirit, that we're going to gather. He's going to be here. We're going to have a great time. Uh, come join us. If you can't join us because you're shielded, then you're still part of this. You're still welcome. We're still going to be online. So you'll be able to join in as you have been doing from your home. It's going to be great. Let's get together next weekend. We'll see you there. Well, this week's been really exciting to get Hope House back. It's been a lot of work for a lot of people. We're so thankful to our builders and to our architect, Pippa Ramsey, and for you, the church, for supporting it and giving to it over the last year and a half. Uh, I'm going to take you on a tour now of Hope House, show you around, and let's be praying that God uses this to bless our community in the time to come. Let's go. Okay, here we are at Hope House. Let's head in to through the new entrance. Come this way. And so, um, one of the things we've done is we've reopened this area so it looks straight out onto our street so we can welcome our community. And the whole idea of Hope House is to serve our community uh, with children's ministry, youth ministry, uh, cafes in the week, our work for Love Your Neighbour, Bloom, all of those things and lots more things that we can do. So you'll come in this way for the new entrance. Uh, this is all being redone, as you can see. Uh, everything's been replastered, painted, and then uh, we've got these side rooms. So through here, they've been redecorated. We'll be using those for kids and for youth stuff. There's storage. We won't see that. And then into the hall, which has been redone. Um, what we've done in the hall is we've uh, put new windows in. And it's all been replastered, repainted, and there's new electrics everywhere in the building. And you may be wondering what this is. This is going to move, but this is so we can do great youth and children's ministry. It's actually going to get slightly smaller and move to a different part of the room, but we're really uh, excited to have that as part of what we're doing. Come this way. Uh, over there, we have the kitchen. So uh, by uh, putting in the kitchen, we're able to serve our community really well. Should we just like run that way, James? Have to just speak this part on the um, so here we are. So our hope is that we can use this to do uh, meals for our community. We we'll also do great hospitality on Sundays, all that sort of thing. Alpha, so so kitchen. It actually used to be a toilet, and now it's a kitchen. So that's very cool. Um, and then we had through there. We have bathrooms, which are four storage, which we can't get in at the moment. Someone is stood there with another stuff. And then we have these two rooms, which are currently being used for someone else. Um, but these are our teaching training rooms, and we're going to be using these in the week for all kinds of organisations. And then through here, if you remember, this room was totally derelict before. So it's amazing to have it back like this. And then through here, and then through here, which is another room, and the coffee truck from which we'll be doing hospitality and all sorts of things. So that's a uh, little intro to Hope House. And uh, if you're coming in the next few weeks, you'll see it. And for sure, we'll have an opening when we can and all of that sort of thing. But thank you so much for being involved in Hope House, for giving to it, for praying for it, uh, to our architects as well, Pippa, and the builders have been amazing. So exciting, and we look forward to what God will do with it. Well, it is great to be able to share from the Bible with you now. And it's great to be back as well. Lou and I had a great time on holiday and we're really excited for what's going to happen over the coming weeks as we come back together as church next weekend. But today I just want to pick up from Mark's Gospel, uh, the end of Mark chapter 4 and then a little bit into Mark 5 about Jesus and the Lord, being the Lord of the storm. And that's the topic today. Jesus is the Lord of the storm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read from Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through to 30, 41. And then we're going to reference Mark chapter 5. But I'd really encourage you to have a read of that in your own time. Just look at some of the stories that are happening in this part of the gospel. Jesus, Lord of the storm. Let's pray together. And Father, we pray you'd be with us now as we look at the Bible together, that you, by your spirit, would meet each and every one of us. Uh, that we know more of your kingdom and more of the life you've called us to. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Here's what it says in Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through to 41. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. They were all, 
also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. So Jesus has just uh, finished in Mark's Gospel teaching about the Kingdom of God. If you remember before the summer, that's what we were looking at together. And then it says here that uh, the evening came and Jesus said to his disciples, let's go in the boat to the other side of the lake. The gate, Lake of Galilee, the Sea of Galilee, was 13 miles long and 8 miles wide. And to cross it took about two or three hours in boats of like eight to 15 people. And so the disciples are in there and they begin to row across this lake and they've got experienced fishermen with them. And Jesus goes for a nap, he goes for a sleep in the stern. And it says that suddenly a storm hits the Sea of Galilee. And that's quite common for the Sea of Galilee. It was known as a place where very suddenly winds could come up and a storm could come. And these guys were experienced fishermen, so most storms they could cope with, but this storm was ferocious. It says in the Gospel it was a furious storm, and it stormed up all around them, and the water was coming in to the boat, and they began to feel as though they were drowning, as though they were going to sink, and they start to panic. They start to worry, and they start to not know what to do. And storms are like that, aren't they? When a storm suddenly comes upon you, it's it's all-encompassing. It like closes in and that's what happens to them. And it says that they they wake Jesus up and they're like, Jesus, don't you care? We're about to drown. Don't you care, Jesus? And what's going on for the disciples in that moment? I mean, they've been with Jesus. They've heard about his kingdom. They've seen him do remarkable, miraculous things. They know that he's someone with power and authority. But in that moment, The only thing that they can think about, the only story that they know, the only reality to them is that storm and whether they will survive. Storms are like that. Uh, Whether it's something happening around us physically or whether it's something happening within us, when the storms come in our lives, it feels so often like they're the only reality, like they're the only thing. They become all-encompassing. Uh, For many of us, COVID-19 has become all-encompassing. It's the only thing that we want to speak about. It's the only thing that's there. It dominates every conversation. You make a plan. You talk about what could be. And in the background, you think to yourself, well, but we don't really know what's going to happen next. It's a storm. It's all-encompassing. And that's true for other things too. Things happening in our families. Things happening amongst our friends things that we've been through, things that we don't tell anyone about but we know are there. And these storms are all encompassing. And that's what it was like for these disciples on this day. And they wake Jesus up and they say to him, don't you care? We're going to drown. The only story they know in that moment is the storm. I wonder what your story is right now, what your reality is right now, what it is that you feel faced with with right now. Maybe you're in the boat and the storms are coming in and you're thinking to yourself, don't you care? There's a storm happening. And you know, one of the funny things about the disciples is often when we hear their stories, uh, we think to ourselves they're quite amusing. Uh, You know, they do funny things. But on this story, I think most of us are on the side of the disciples. We're like, come on, Jesus. There is a storm really happening. We could really use you Uh, to get involved and help us right now. Uh, I think when we read this story, we're definitely leaning towards the disciples' side of events. We're like, come on, Jesus. And Jesus, it says, he wakes up, he rebukes the wind, and he says it, quiet, be still. He has total power over it. And then he says to the disciples, why are you so afraid? Uh, Do you still have no faith? Or better translated, where is your faith? Uh, What is it that's happening in this physical story about real events? What is it showing us about the kingdom of 
God. Uh, the first thing it shows us is that Jesus is not just with us. He's Lord over the things that are happening. He's not just with us in the storm. He's Lord over the storm. He has remarkable power. Uh, what are they discovering about Jesus? Uh, that he's not just a good teacher. He's not just got good, good words, but with those words comes remarkable power. He can change events. He can reshape what's going on around them. But they're also seeing that although the storm felt like the only reality in that moment, Jesus knew of a greater reality. He knew of a bigger thing. The storm wasn't bigger than him. It wasn't bigger than his power. And Jesus is the one who embodies the kingdom of God. Jesus is there to show us just how powerful God is. He's there to reveal what's really going on in our world. You see, for the disciples, the storm felt like everything. But when Jesus woke up in that boat, he showed them that he was more powerful than that. He was more real than that pressing reality right then. Jesus is not just with us in this storm. He's Lord over the storm. Uh, maybe today you need to know that. Uh, he is alongside you, but he's Lord over it too. Whatever it is that you're going through, whatever it is that you're faced with, he's Lord over it. But you know, with Jesus, it's not just about survival. It's also about revival. Because the disciples don't just survive. They, in the next moments, they step into a revival moment. It says that they arrive on the shore in Gerasenus, Gerasenus and there there's a man. And immediately they're drawn to his attention. This man is there and he's, it says that he's been taken over by some kind of evil. He's nicknamed Legion. It says that he lives amongst the tombs and he self-harms and is overcome. It's like hell itself has taken over him. And Jesus becomes Lord over that man's life too. And it says in that day, that man was set free from the evil that overcame him. The storm that was in his life was defeated. In Mark 5, 15, it says, when they came to Jesus, they saw this man, this man that was nicknamed Legion, who lived amongst tombs and was self-harming, who'd been overcome by hell itself. They saw this man who'd been possessed by the legion of demons and he was sitting there dressed and in his right mind. And with Jesus, the disciples don't just see that they can survive. They see what it looks like to be part of a revival, what it looks like to see the kingdom of God come. Uh, we read on in Mark 5 that in Mark uh, 5.21, they cross back over the lake. This time there's no storm. And they get back into Galilee and they're met there in Galilee uh, with the news that Jairus, the synagogue leader's daughter, is sick. And Jesus decides to go there. But on the way there, he meets a woman who touches him. And he feels the power of the kingdom of God leave him. And he says, what's happening? Uh, who touched me? And people are like, how on earth could you ask who's touched you? There's a huge crowd here, Jesus. But Jesus knows something has happened. And it turns out a woman who'd been bleeding year upon year. No one could solve her problem. In desperation, had reached out to touch Jesus. And as she touched Jesus, she'd been healed. Uh, Jesus is Lord in her life too. And the storm of sickness that day ended for her. And then we're told that Jesus does make it to the synagogue leader's house and Jairus' daughter is no longer sick, now she's dead. But Jesus is Lord in that situation, in the storm that has come upon that house. And he steps in. And there she's risen back to life. What is happening in these stories? Uh, imagine how these stories were told. Peter's like retelling the story and he, find, he says, look, to John Mark, he says to John Mark, we found out that day that Jesus was Lord over the storm. But we also found out that day that Jesus was Lord over evil. We went to the other side and there was this man and everyone nicknamed him Legion. And Jesus set him free. And then we came back over the lake to Galilee. 
and we met Jairus and on the way to Jairus' house we met this woman and she was sick and unwell and all her life she'd been bound by this thing. And Jesus healed her and we found out Jesus was Lord over sickness. And then we got to Jairus' house but Jairus' daughter, she wasn't sick anymore, she died but Jesus went in and we found out that day that Jesus was Lord even over death. In Mark's Gospel, what we're hearing in this part is that Jesus is the Lord of the storm. What is the storm that you're going through right now? Jesus is Lord over it. Maybe it's the general feeling that we all have of uncertainty. Jesus is the Lord over it. And we can buy into the narrative that the COVID-19 pandemic is the only thing happening in the world. Or we might look out at the political situations that we face and we can buy into the idea that they're the only thing that's happening in the world. That they're the story. Uh, That this world really is just sin and sickness. But we're called instead to look beyond the storm to Jesus who's Lord over it. Who has power to change it, to transform it. Jesus embodies the kingdom of God. He comes to show us what the kingdom of God is like. And through his death and resurrection, he establishes the kingdom of God once and for all. A kingdom that will not be destroyed. A kingdom that will outlast this world. Uh, Jesus will for us enter the storms that we face. And so he will on the cross take upon himself sin. There he'll defeat evil. There he'll defeat the consequences of evil in our world. If you're looking out right now and you're thinking to yourself, this world is so messed up, it's so broken. It feels as though every country you look at, you cannot find leaders where it's going well. It feels as though every situation that we look at is overcome by sin. But Jesus says, don't just look at the storm. Look at the Lord of the storm. And on the cross, Jesus dealt with sin. He dealt with the sin of our world and he dealt with my sin. And he dealt with all the storms that my sin causes in my life. He gave us a new day. He said, I'm Lord over them through his death and resurrection. And on his cross, he entered the storm of sickness. He entered the storm of evil and he defeated them once and once for all. He even defeated death there. Jesus is Lord. That's what this is here to tell us. That's the message for us today. As we go through this new talk term, as we face all kinds of things, we're called again to remember who's Lord. There are, there are two questions at the end of this passage in Mark 4. Uh, Jesus says to the disciples, where is your faith? That's a great question for us today. Where is our faith? As we go forward, what are we putting our trust in? Uh, What are we believing in? What are we hoping for? Uh, Let's put our trust in Jesus. Let's put our hope in him. Let's keep holding on to the greater story that in him, through his death and his resurrection, a new kingdom has been established and it's bigger It's greater and it will last longer than anything in this world. And the other question is, who is this? The disciples, they turn to each other and they say, who is this? And a great question for us to keep asking and to keep talking about as a church is, who is this? Who is this Jesus? What does he mean for us? What will he do amongst us? And as we follow him, To keep on looking for him to be at work amongst us. Isn't it amazing for these disciples? They don't just survive the storm. They go on and they see Jesus do remarkable things. They see really just how much of a Lord he is. Just how much of the Lord that he is. So I'd love to pray with us today. uh, With those two questions in mind. Where is your faith? And who is this? But also as you think about the storm that you might feel you're in right now to begin to invite the Spirit to help you see Jesus in the midst of it. He's here now. And so, Lord, we pray your kingdom come. As you taught us to pray, your kingdom come on earth as in heaven. Send your Spirit upon us. And for those of us right now who maybe would feel overwhelmed by fear, overwhelmed by a sense of uncertainty, 
a lack of control, like the waves and the wind are coming against us. Uh, We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would meet with us. And just as I pray now, I think that's a word for some of us. We feel out of control and we're desperate to be in control. And Jesus says, will you let me be Lord? Will you let me be Lord now too? And just allow him now by his spirit to bring you peace. It says in the Bible that he brings peace that passes understanding. And just allow his peace now to come upon you. Be still, he says to the storm. Be still, he says. I'm just going to wait for a few moments. I think that's a word from the Lord about control. That some of us, the issue we have right now is it just feels so out of control. Jesus comes and he says, let me be in control. Let me be Lord. And the Holy Spirit meet with us again. Help us to put our faith in you, to be able to answer the question, who is this? It's the Lord, it's Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Fall afresh on us. Remind us of all that you've done for us, that you are indeed Lord. Lord, we pray as well for those encounters that happened to happen in our time too. That, Lord, for those of us who feel overcome by evil, by uh, sin, Lord, that you'd bring freedom. That we pray for anyone who's sick today. Lord, that you would uh, bring healing. And remind us again, Lord, that you're more powerful than death. Send, Lord, your Holy Spirit. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. And so, Lord, we offer ourselves before you again. We choose, Lord, to trust you. So we go into this new academic year as we head into autumn. We pray, Holy Spirit, give us all that we need in Jesus' name.
every change Just call on the name of Jesus today it Might be for physical healing or Maybe you're feeling particularly anxious today and just call on the name of Jesus, the mighty, powerful name of Jesus. When we call on His name, the atmosphere changes. And even if our circumstance doesn't change, our perspective changes because the name of Jesus is powerful. So call on His name in this moment, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Just speak it out, sing it out where you are. Well, that brings us to the end of our gathering for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Next week we'll be reopening our building, so that means we'll be online for St. Jesus Online and in our building. If you're coming to our building, don't forget to register for tickets from tomorrow. If you're new or visiting today, you'd like to get to know us, then why don't you email hello at gateshead.church and we'll be in touch with you. But as we uh, prepare to move into this new term, and as we prepare to move into this new season, I want to read to you now from 1 Thessalonians. And this is what Paul says to the church there. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit, do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good, reject every kind of evil, and may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. And Lord, today we choose to trust in your faithfulness. We know that the one who calls us is faithful and Lord, we know that you will do it. In Jesus' name, Amen. See you next week. Grace and peace. Shackles